Hi, and welcome back to Brentech IT Support. Today, we're going to be looking at the SUMA Smart Blinds and Connect. Now, the idea of this is that our blinds will be able to be controlled by the battery-powered smart motor, which comes with a solar panel, and the Connect, which will allow us to connect it to the rest of our home automated systems. The Connect is actually a Raspberry Pi version 3, I believe, that comes in there with an SD card with all the applications and programming on there out of the box, ready to go. So we'll get on with the unboxing and set up. I think what we'll do is we'll start off by setting up the Connect and then we'll start setting up the motors and the Android app for it as well. What a bird's nest. At least they patch it to keep it safe, but it does make a bit of a mess. It's biodegradable, obviously. We have a UK power supply. USB cable. The Raspberry Pi, or the Connect Hub as they call it. And that is it, which for us is useless because that adapter won't do anything. Now I probably do have a USB power source that I can plug it into. There's no packing list. No instructions. It looks like it probably should have had a few other bits in there, so maybe we are missing something from our one. On the device itself we have four USB 2 ports, an Ethernet port, an audio jack, HDMI port, a USB port for charging and powering it, and a trans flash or micro USB card which has the operating system installed. It's a nice little box. It is actually well made. I like that. It's a good little pie box for that. I believe they say that you can pa uh, connect this via Wi-Fi. I found a suitable power supply for it and plugged it in and you can see the green power light on and the red indicator indicating that it's booting up. We'll open up a barcode scanner up on our phone and we'll scan the QR code which should take us to their website and we should hopefully be able to get the app to install it. Yes, it takes us to the Google Play Store and so we can now just click install click open it does say here to use a regular phone charger so maybe that's why I didn't come with one. Place it next to the device have to grant it permission Yes, yeah, so you want the geosync tagging on. Okay, I'll quickly move the phone closer. Okay, we're only getting that at the moment, so I will have to see if I can find some instructions. The app needs to connect it to the motors, not to the Connect Hub. So therefore we're going to push this to one side and get on with the unboxing of the motor. because you can run this independently without the hub. That's an extra, so obviously you need to set this up first. And here's the motor. We've got a charge cable, some beads to run through the blind, and the solar panel. You can open the front and you've got your gear wheel where you can see that the little beads will run through those slots and there's a little insert spot just there for it to pull the chain through. You can also screw it to the wall using those holes. They haven't provided any screws or wall plugs but that is an option and they provided sticky tape on the back so you can just stick it to the wall. I'm going to try just sticking it to the wall and hopefully that will do but whilst I am mounting it I will mark the wall where those goes in case it does come off. So first of all what we're going to do is power it up using 
the solar panel and that will get it into pairing mode. And we can hear the tune it plays. So now we'll come back to the phone and we'll click continue. And it's now found the unit. Okay, we can hear it's paired to that. Okay, so now we've got to just adjust our shades. So we've done that. Okay, so now I will go into move this so we can show you how to do that part. First of all, I've got to remove our chain hook that we have from our set. Now I've got to have the device and the phone to hand. I have to use the up down arrows to feed it in. So I'm just going to place it just in the slot there and I'm going to say wind it down because I believe that will probably start sucking it in. Yep. Okay, and that is now pulling the blind, that has some pull force to it, it really does. And we can say stop. And I'll just say down and stop. Right, that's now got the chain in a nice position. Now, with this, when it comes down, This is actually working backwards for me, so I'm going to have to readjust how this goes. But you do have to be careful about where you position it. Because it will hit the damp line if you have it directly under the centre. So I'm going to have to pull it closer to the wall so it just misses the blind. And then you've got to be worried about where the cable's going to hit as well, because that's going to come in contact with it too. Then you can click continue. Mount the device to the wall, so I have to make the choice now. So the best place for us is having it slightly in front. It doesn't look obtrusive, it's a nice little white box, that's fine. Just having the box neatly in line with the wall there, will be unobtrusive and fine. I'm going to use a braddle to mark where the holes are so I can strip to the wall if I find the sticky tape isn't enough because this motor and that blind is very high pull power it really does give a good pull to it so now I'll remove the sticky pads and just stick it straight to the wall give it a good hard push We'll come back to the app and we'll click continue. Okay, so we'll press the up arrow and see if the rate moves. Yes, that has recalibrated itself automatically. That is very good. Continue. Now we need to set the lower position. So you want to lower the blind. I'm just trying to fine tune it now where I want them to stop. 
that's actually hit the bottom, so I've got to bring it up a little bit. I'll mark that as the bottom position, as our slatted blind system is as close to close as I can get it. Continue, and now for their high position. Continue again, and we'll call this device name Patio Door. Click Next and click Done. So now we can control the blinds from the app. You can say where you want it set to, and it will just start moving them. And move them up a bit. And there we have that. I'll right. put the cover back on. Before you stick your solar panel to the window, make sure you peel off the plastic sheet first, which protects it. That way it'll get a better connectivity to the sun. It'll just have less in the way and it'll be nice and clean as well. Now what I want to do is make sure the window's nice and clean, there's no grease so you can stick it to the window. I'm going to stick it down here to the bottom because that will then stop it from snaking the cable as much and then just tie neat and tidy up the lead down here and I'll just tack it to the wall. And that should now charge the device and keep it powered and allow it to do light detection as well. So when it gets dark outside you'll know it's evening and it can either open or close the blind for you and in the morning Again, it could either open and close the blind for you as well. I've set the second blind up and that was all okay, but I've got a problem with our third one. That mode doesn't seem to be powering up. So we'll have a look at that one later. We're now gonna try and set it up on my wife's phone. And to do that, we need to come to the app, come near to a device that you've already set up and click continue and continue again. You'll hear the beep, and it'll say connect to the one that you've been next to. You want to use the existing configuration. You can click done, and now you've got access to the patio door sensor on this phone as well. but it's only added the patio door one, it hasn't added our other ones. So you have to do the same process for the other blinds as well. With the hub, you can connect to the SEMA hub, and again, it's you just place it right next to it. Um, I think it's using NCFC for detecting the device. And when you connect to Home Assistant, using the configurations and integration settings in Home Assistant, it works immediately as long as you know the IP address. So do set a static IP address for the hub as well. And you do that through your normal router configurations as well. There will be a link on how to set static IP addresses up here and down in the description below. Now we've got blinds set up, we'll start doing some grouping and automation. What we're going to do now is we're going to set up a grouping for our windows. So you come to the gear, group with other devices, And we're only going to group these two together, you can group all of them if you want, but we're just grouping these two together for now. Give it a group name. It is limited on how many you can put, so keep the name short. Press the tick and save. So now we have the group 
which has all the devices at the same time and the one window that we didn't group. So if you have grouped them, it will just get rid of independent control from the rooms and set it to halfway and we have both lines going down at the same time and back up. We can now see the different ones if we go into the settings for it. And we can see that is at 14% it is connected to the charger. And we can set some triggers for this one. Now the triggers are very, very nice on how they've got this working. Add a trigger. You can have it time of day, sunrise, sunset, light levels increase or decrease. So it gives you a nice set of options on how you want to run this. So we're going to say at sunrise, come back. And we can say we want it 50%, but the patio door will have that 100%. So we'll go OK. And we can enable morning mode, which sets the speed of which it's going to open. So that's an interesting feature to have as well. That, that makes it slightly quiet as well. So if it's in your bedroom, then it will open it slowly. So it will be slightly quiet and be less disturbing. But we'll leave that as it is and we'll click save and come back and add a second trigger sunset and then you can have it closed but for the door we will leave that as is but we'll have a separate set of routines for the bay window so it's exactly the same thing with the other window I see I can have an offset as well if you want. With the offset time, what you could say is at sunset, close halfway, and then half an hour after sunset, close 100%. So having the offset function is a very nice feature to have as well. So we've got the triggers now set for the two different windows. And we can see our battery level as well and again that one's charging. If you have a problem with your device what you need to do is go to troubleshooting and reset and forget device. So it completely removes all settings, it removes it from the app and you have to start the whole pairing process again. Uh, reset the um, low point and high point if you want to adjust the low point and high point at any time, you can't, you have to reset the whole device. Hopefully they can fix that in an update. And that's the basics of the app. We're now trying to add our device to our Google Home Assistant. So we come to the Home app. And we'll click Add. Set up a new device. Works with Google. See my smart home. You'll find your Super Connect ID, which is the MAC address of the device, and you find that by taking your phone and you go over to your Connect, place next to it, and make sure you've opened Super Connect. When you place it next to it, it will detect it and it will show you that information. You then have to remember it and type it into the Home Assistant app. Your Wi-Fi MAC address is the ID, so you must connect it via Wi-Fi to get this to work, not via the Ethernet cable. So do bear that in mind when you're initially setting it up. And it looks like that might have added it. I can't see it in the list, but let's try. Same all devices. 
Sure. Syncing devices for eight providers. Yes, we now have them in the window. Close all the blinds. Yep, and all the blinds again. Closing three things. Open all the blinds. Sure, opening three things. Yeah, so we can see some of the settings that are in there. It doesn't give us a lot, but it does at least allow us to do it. So you can set what room it's in. And you have to do that with all of the devices. So now you can see that they're in the living room section. It's a shame you can't actually adjust, have a little picture adjustment system in there. That would have been a nice touch, but you can now add it to your routines as you would. So if you come to here, manage routines. And then you say good morning. You have to add action and say click add. And now that's added that option. Click save. And again, you can have that for your good night routine where it closes all the blinds as well. Good night. Hallway is currently set to eco mode. To change the temperature, you'll need to switch it to a different mode. Your first event for tomorrow is called It Starts at 9 a.m. In Chatham tomorrow, it'll be partly cloudy, with a high of 26 and a low of 15. Good night, David. And as you can hear, the blinds are now closing by themselves after completing the full routine. And the same would happen now for the morning routine as well. Good morning. Good morning, David. It's 11.12 a.m. Right now in Chatham it's 23 degrees and partly cloudy. Okay, we'll quickly have a look at how to set up the Sommer Smart Blinds on Home Assistant. It's a very simple one this time, so we'll have a quick look at the screen. Come down to Configuration, Integrations, click Add, and just search for Soma, connect, you enter the IP address, and just click submit. It finds all your devices, so you just add them to their rooms. Click finish. You can now see that it's added here. And if you come to your overview, you'll now see that they're integrated here as well and you can control them to go down, up and stop. Nice and simple for that one. Right. So now we've got all three of our Suma Smart Blind motors installed. We did have a problem with one of them, it was a faulty mold motor unfortunately. And of course it had to happen during the height of the coronavirus pandemic in the UK and across the world and Europe, so getting a replacement was a bit slower than normal. But Suma did send us a replacement 
and they did eventually send us a power supply as well for the Connect. It's still unclear if it's meant to come with one or not. Uh, if it doesn't come with one, it's a mobile phone USB power supply effectively. But it's quite a high amperage one. So I will put the information on the screen of what the power supply needs to be so you can order yourself one. And if I can find one, I'll put a link in the description below as well. Because it is to run a Raspberry Pi rather than a mobile phone, so it might just need that little bit more power. What happened with the faulty motor was it would forget where the high and low points of the start-stop are for the blind and sort of over open the blind and it will pull at the bottom and get caught up and cause a mess on its way back up and potentially it actually did catch around this because you've got day-night lines which is a continuous roll. So when it reaches the end of that loop, it then starts going back up again and doesn't actually have a stop at the bottom or a stop at the top. It just continuously tries to go up or all the way down and then it starts looping back around it again until it tightens up. Now we had it tighten up around here and it pulled the blind off the ceiling and that was one problem that we had. And the other time it would not stop when it got to the top and it would then again pull the blind down. So during a setup, be aware that there is no jam detection on it. And so it would be best to have someone just with you ready to catch the blind if that were to happen because sometimes the response on the app when you're selecting up and down is a bit slow and it won't do it. Also sometimes as we saw in the setup that the steps for setting a position it'll do a small step, small step, big step, small step, small step, small step, big step and that would cause again potential problems there. It's a shame it doesn't have jam detection, it would make it perfect if it did have at least strain detection because it does detect if it's going down or up it does that automatic calibration perfectly so they should be able to sense that extra draw on the motor and on the batteries that it, it's reached a point of tension and immediately cut the motor then that would eliminate that problem out of thought so just be aware of that if you do get a faulty unit and it doesn't stop and it keeps trying to go fully wind the blind in either direction have someone there just to catch it once you've set it, run it from the top to the bottom, bottom to the top, several times. Once you're happy that it always starts and stops in the right places, then you can sort of redecorate your window and put your little ornaments back on. But do be aware that if it does go wrong, the blinds, depending on how they're clipped, can just pull off. If anything gets jammed and you're pulling a blind with a normal pull cord, I assume the same thing would happen as well. But just make sure that you, once it's set, you do the full test first. And then once, you're, once it's done, it's been absolutely perfect. So I do say thank you very much to Suma for sending us the replacement motor and the power supply. And I do know it was difficult during this particular time of quarantine as well. It, it's a good system, it does work well. I would like instructions to be included in the box because a lot of users will not be able to work that out and troubleshoot that themselves or go online and download an instruction manual. I know that I think they're doing it for environmental reasons to try and cut down on waste, but put instructions in it, but please. That will make life so much easier because you are meant to fully charge them first. They only come with a limited charge in them for EU regulations. You only know this if you go online and download the instruction manual. So again, having low power while setting up could cause problems. And of course, once you plug it in, if you plug it straight into a mains charger, then it immediately goes into pairing mode and you can start the setup. So be ready to do the setup process when you plug it into a charger. And we'll also activate it with the solar panel as well, but you're probably best off to set it up and plug it into a USB charger and do one motor at a time, set it up, get it working, and then plug in the solar panel. Make sure with the solar panels you also remove the plastic film coating on the front of the panel. They've so neatly placed the protective film on there, it looks like it's meant to stay. It's not you are meant to remove the film. 
so just carefully remove that before you stick them to the windows. Well, if you did like the video, please give it a good thumbs up, like, comment and subscribe. I'll leave a link for it in the description down below if you want to get sets yourself. You don't need the control unit if you just want to have individual blinds which you can control by your smartphone app. If you want to link it to a smart system, you do need the control system as well. And I've linked it into both um, Google and She Who Should Not Be Named. And I've also connected it to the home system and it works perfectly for all of them. That's it. See you next time. Bye for now.